Chuck. It's P. Simple. The revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. Talk Session Series, the Revolution. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Taryn Morgan, the founder and content creator of the Real Talk Session Series. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. And of course, for staying hydrated with Warrior Water Alkaline by Fillmore Fit Gym in Windsor Mill, Maryland. Uh, so today I have a special guest. Um, most people are scared of snakes, but I have my one of my little cousins, um, He's big on snakes, and he's probably one of the few, if not the only, black person uh, that breeds reptiles and snakes. So, give it up for my little cousin, TD Snakes. What's going on, cuz? How you doing? How you doing, cuz? I'm good, good I'm you. good. All right, so just to begin, um, how did you get into snakes? <laughs> I think other than my dad, it all started off with me flipping through the channels back in the day when I was little and finding Channel 57. Good old okay. Animal Planet. Right. And I saw some dude on top of a crocodile. <laughs> that was mm. like the, uh, the, the, the the dude that that passed, right? Yeah, Steve Irwin. Okay. Yeah, Steve Irwin. So that's a really, between him and my dad, I don't know, it was just so intriguing. Yeah, and my grandmother, um, she used to always have pictures, show me pictures, like my dad with the snakes. Mm. And I actually sent it to you, by the way. Like, it's just randomly chilling on my phone, I think, I believe, somewhere. Okay. But uh, other than that... I don't know. It was just a natural infatuation, like just me being outdoors, saying, "Oh, they come in all different sizes and colors." Like, yeah, I don't know. It was just all right. No, it's dope, definitely. And I'm gonna stay over here because I don't mess with snakes, but it's all good though. <laughs> but bird. um, so that snake, what kind of snake is that? This is a Burmese python. Um, I mean, this color phase, he's a a hypo granite, which is like a two different color gene. Okay, so. In a sense, like, you know the brown and black one I showed you? Yeah. That's what they look like in the wild. And those wild ones, actually, believe it or not, are invasive in the Everglades right now. Okay. And I don't know if you've seen the picture of the python eating the alligator and, like, the alligator bursting out of its stomach. Yeah. Like, that's a Burmese python. You feel mm, me? Yeah. So, that's, that's something else. <laughs> people, oh, what's the word for it? The tr trade market back in the day, they were so big in a pet trade. Like, when the big hurricanes hit and um, most of the reptile distribution places, they got blown away in a sense. So, they pretty much got freed and they're running around and that's what really made people develop their fear because their cats started going missing their dogs are missing oh these snakes are eating alligators yeah there's a real reason to be afraid but so that started from the burmese pythons that yeah. got loose okay yep, man. and the same thing is just i understand why you're you're afraid but they technically should not be here yeah. they're an invasive species and supposed to be living in asia yeah so you can't really blame anybody but yourselves for establishing your own fear True. And in true reality, they're not out here to, they don't hunt people down and chase people. Yeah. It's always the people that get bit and hurt are just the unlucky ones and the dumb ones. Mm. Like, in true reality, if a snake is running from you that's 15 feet long, are you going to grab it by the tail and, yeah. like, try to. No, I understand. Like, you feel me? Yeah. I know somebody grabbed me by my foot, I'm going to bite them too. <laughs> nah, I definitely feel you, definitely. So, how many snakes do you have? Uh, Right now, like 30 and counting, plus the clutch of eggs, so. Okay, so you showed me some eggs. So you had about how many, like 30 other eggs? I want to say like 30. <sighs> yeah, they yeah. the hatching um, the beginning of May, I believe, the first two weeks of May, I believe. Okay. So generally, how long is the process, I guess, from for birthing a snake? Um, Like the whole breeding cycle, in a sense? Yeah, the breeding cycle. Like, because break it down, because a lot of people aren't aware, and you're the one that's knowledgeable. All right. So I guess, like, for these guys, because... Which snakes do? They're very um, opportunistic hunters. Mm. So, like, these guys, they'll, they're able to breed within a year and a half from hatching, which okay. is the scary part, which made them so invasive in Florida because, oh, these snakes Jeez. escaped a year and a half. Now they're having babies, especially with all the food they have available to them. Yeah. So, I guess, bare minimum, a male could be around a year, female, year and a half. Okay. And then after they mate, I know we put ours together back in December, mm. and she laid eggs beginning of March, so two months. Two months, okay. And then after that, it's another... 65 to 85 days before the eggs hatch depending on the temperature okay so that's about four or five months just about okay and the scary part is to with burmese pythons if they're healthy enough they can reach twice in a year yeah that's that's why yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. So, so you you so you have the burmese python you have another species uh, correct, right? ball pythons ball pythons okay yeah. so what's the difference between the two um python reaches and python bividus what's up buddy um, the ball pythons tend to be smaller and they're, they're from Africa, the Sahara Desert. And okay. when they get scared, they tend to curl up into a ball and not really bite. Got but you. Or anything with a mouth can bite you. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> like, uh, 
the ball pythons in a sense though or they tend to be a lot more docile and that's what makes them a really good beginner pet okay and then burmese pythons i don't tell anybody i don't yeah. tell anybody's a beginner pet get a berm because the first year of life they go from a little one foot hatchling to six feet long then you're looking yeah, like what the heck? i can't wild. put this thing in my house uh -huh. and that's why i have another thing in florida people just let them go mm. and the climate's warm enough to support them so they just go off on have a good old time got you got you so how many times have you been bitten i know before you said your father's been bitten so like how many times have you been bitten for in my whole life or the past like my me getting back into the snake experience like the snake I, life i would say with when you got serious about the snake life so three years ago none <laughs> oh actually right. one one it was one baby one and it was actually one of the funny bites because we just got back from the Hamburg show. It's a reptile show in Pennsylvania. Okay. And, yo, there's some crazy stuff out there. We've seen everything from, like, saltwater crocodiles, cobras. Mm. Literally, you could buy these things and bring them back to Jersey if you wanted to. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not saying to. Like, yeah. don't do it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a good idea. Okay. But, like, this place is crazy. It's like Candyland. <sighs> and, oh, um, we got one baby hypo. I think he's actually still in there now. And he decided to climb up my arm sleeve. Yeah. And I was trying to keep pulling him out. He got nervous, and I just felt the little teeth like, so, you. So what? what was, what's like the bite? Can you describe it? Like, is it like a pinch or? Have you ever you got a tattoo? Uh, no, I don't have a tattoo. No? So, so it's equivalent to like a tattoo. Just about, but not. It doesn't hurt as bad. Nowhere as bad. It's just like a whole bunch of pricks. That's because they're so small. Okay. It doesn't really hurt, and I don't want it. To, I don't know what it's like to get bit by a big one. <laughs> nah, 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 I've seen nah. the pictures in. Nope, nope. Yeah. What makes it worse is because snakes, all reptile, like all snakes, they have recurved teeth. So when they bite you and you pull away, yup, they dig yeah. right in. Just uh, tear. Uh, I yep. mean, <laughs> yeah. yep. So, in, in your experience dealing with snakes, what do you think is the the most common misconception about them? Uh, that they're stupid. Okay. Like they're actually extremely intelligent. Like these guys, they have facial recognition. Like, they definitely see color, um, the way they smell. Like, what they do, they, when they stick their tongue out, they pull, retract it, and the smell hits an organ in their face, and it just goes through their brain, and hits a mm. sensor. They know whether it's food or not. Um, like, my snakes, because they're conditioned, mm. um, I don't tell anybody ever to do this. I tell myself all the time, like, I'm crazy, mm. but I don't know. I just catch myself doing stupid things randomly. Yeah. <laughs> but dogs. It's a warm, furry animal. Mm. And snakes like warm, furry animals for some reason. Yeah. And I could pet my dog and go in and handle my snakes without getting bit. But it's because I've been doing it since day one. Okay. Most mistakes happen is because somebody went and touched something small and furry. Yeah. And then went and touched a snake and the snake confused it for food. Oh, so it has like the smell on it. Yeah. So, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yup, yup. And they're very sensitive to that stuff. Mm. It's like my, my snake room right now, if I was to pull out a rabbit, let's say to feed him, mm. you would see all their heads pop up. Yeah, and start start scanning, waiting. Like, oh, I smell food. I just don't see it yet. Mm. So it's like, in true reality, there's so many precautions. Like, that's why I say small children. Yeah, small children and big snakes. If your snake's docile and you trust it enough, but me personally, I'm not going to take the risk with my own kid. You know mm. what I mean? Because I've seen things go wrong. Yeah, but small, just small, warm animals near big pythons is <laughs> I not. Can imagine, and that's why I tell everybody like. Please know what you're doing if you're going to get into this, like with the big snakes. Yeah. Because you're just going to be calling me back if you purchase a snake from me saying, oh, can you take it back? Like, yes, the snakes are for sale. So like, we, we're going to put this information oh at the end. So, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, it, it's, it, there's so much stuff that stems into it. It's deep. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, you sell snakes, but it doesn't seem like you want to sell them to anybody. It's because I understand the species I'm working with mm. and I understand it's dangerous. And if something happens, it's just going to make all reptile keepers look bad. Okay. So, like you, the, so you're big on being accountable. Yes. Okay. It's like the Lacey Act because that's what made these. Wait, what's the Lacey Act? Because I never heard that before. The Lacey Act was something, It's um, it was a law made so you can't transport Burmese pythons and certain species over state lines. Got you. And it stemmed off of a little girl being killed because somebody had a wrongfully owned Burmese python. You know how you see the pictures of, oh, the snake sleeps with my kid, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It was just one of those stupid mistakes where the snake mistaked the kid as food, but it's like, it's five-year-old, eight-year-old kid, like, yeah. come on, it's eating 10-pound chicken, it's almost the same size as your kid, why? Why are you going to take that risk? Yeah, that's, and that's crazy. The little girl got killed, and they put a ban on it. Yep, and then recently, they just lifted the ban so you could transport them over state lines, except for New York, though, because okay. that's where it happened at, I feel like. Mm. So that's why you're not allowed to keep them there. But see, New York's weird, too. You notice, like, oh, you hear about the lady who had a tiger in her apartment and stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Why the hell do you guys think you could own something like this? 
And I, how is it even possible for somebody to own a tiger? Is that that's probably illegal, right? She was on a <laughs> <It's hell>. yeah, <laughs> like uh, like OD. There's actually a tiger lady on the other side of Jackson. Actually, that tiger lady, she had two tigers get loose, and they survived. In New York? No, in New Jersey, like in my town on the oh. other side of Jackson. Yes, and you know how woodsy this town is. Yeah, yo, she couldn't find them. And you know what the tigers were doing? Eating roadkill. And that's surviving crazy. happily. That's crazy. And that's, yep, facts. Those tigers could have happily just gone on their whole lives. People would have never noticed until that one significant day. Yeah. Like, exactly. Oh, I cannot imagine. <laughs> TJ, take out the trash. Walk out. Siberian tiger coming down. Yeah, the street, like, nah, that's wild. Oh my. Uh, <laughs> nope, 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 nope. So you're extremely intelligent and knowledgeable snake. So, like, how do you stay, like, I guess, informed? Uh, reading, I guess, and just me constantly working. I feel like also in this field, you have to stay close to the other like reptile owners and stuff. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, like especially genetics wise, once you start working with genetics, like this guy, like he's not a normal Burmese python. Yeah, he's looking at me though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, say so he's not. Why, why isn't he a normal one? No, just because um his color phase it makes him a it's a co-dominant and recessive. Okay. So it's like he's a granite and a hypo. So hypo, let's say um you get 50 50 percent like if i took a regular hypo and put it to a female yeah. you know that's a normal half the babies will come out hypo half of them will come out normal okay so it's like also if you put it in the categories if i took a regular brother to an albino they're all going to come out head albinos so they're all going to look normal yeah. they're going to have that albino gene that's not broken out yet mm. so once i breed them back then it's like okay now i got the two gene animal yeah and so it's like you really need to be in tune with who you're breeding your animals with because you don't want to have random stuff and they, i even heard of people hybridizing like burmese pythons or articulated pythons mm. dumb idea <laughs> and i don't know none of that stuff either what you're talking about yeah. but it's all good though you, oh, yeah. I, if you so, want, so that makes them like i'm assuming that that makes them vicious the reticulated python is the world's longest snake if mm -mm. being technical, this is this world's second heaviest snake mm -mm. other than the anaconda. So it's like, yeah. yep, you feel me? So it's like you're taking a snake that could grow 30 feet long and it's like if it has a, like a proper environment to grow. Mm. But then you're taking a snake that could grow easily 300 pounds nah. and mm -mm. mixing it into the equation. I'm good. And same thing, once they hit 30 feet long, it's easy to see a 300 pound animal. Like... Mm -hmm. My 15 foot one right now is weighing in at a buck 40. So it's Wait, so that's the biggest one you have? 15 foot snake, 150. 150, 140. Right there. Man, that could stay right in that room, too. Yeah. <laughs> now nah, I'm good. I she, think mean, she's the nicest. She's yeah. like a little cat. Like yeah. a, little, a little big cat. But. All right, that, that's your little big cat right there. Yeah. Because. <laughs> Going back to what you just said, like it's important that you network and you're in touch with other breeders. So, in your experience so far, how many black breeders have you met? Oh, all right. Crickets? Crickets? <laughs> On a real note, I know I met a lot of black keepers, black never keepers. black breeders. And that's the crazy part, So what's too. the difference between the, the breeders and keepers? Keepers, like, they're the people who do it for, like, hobby. Like, oh, I want a snake. So they're the ones who will go and buy an extreme expensive snake. Mm. They say, okay, I got a very nice looking one. Just one, though. Yeah. But then you got people like me who do it as, like, a hobby that's passion. Mm. Like, I want to know exactly what makes them tick. And I don't know. It's like a... Like a what's it called to it a uh, like a, a self care type thing for you therapeutic. And it's like a, I just love animals. Like yeah. <laughs> and it's like I'm not doing it for money. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing it so I can keep doing my passion. Yeah. Like in reality, because every single dime I would get from like selling these snakes, just gonna go back into feeding them. Yeah. And paying for the heat to for them. Like if yeah. I could, I really would love to just take them on educational purposes and teach little kids about them mm -hmm. and teach them like. This is just so, this is so much you can teach somebody, but this is a snake, you know what I mean? It's the number one misunderstood animal. Yeah. And people really get that mixed up because people be more afraid than so-and-so walking down the street. Uh -huh. But it's like, you're afraid of this thing, but you're not afraid of that. <laughs> I, cause I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I keep looking at this thing and like, he keep looking at me like, nah, he's, I don't want no beef. He's scared of the mic. That's why. <laughs> he keeps on looking at it too. Oh, okay. He's trying to run away. I got you. Would you get your kids into doing this too? Oh, like at yeah. early age? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. The youngest possible. But the, well, like you said, you would be make sure that they're supervised though to ensure that the snakes. Don't. Oh yeah. Okay. I would never let my kids hold something like like with the, like a full grown like yeah. a little snake like this, and it's a kid that's um not even a kid. Let's say my dad didn't let me own my first snake till I was about ten. Okay. So that makes sense. That's like the proper. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I wouldn't. So many people in my life said, "Oh, can my baby touch it? Why are you gonna let your?" Different kid in your arms try to touch this snake so it could squeeze. You know how babies don't know their strength, mm -hmm. so it could squeeze and my snake could turn around and bite. And then you looking at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. So it's like no, I want my kid to have be able to have the 
intellect to understand okay like the behavioral aspect like snakes don't love you <laughs> like, yeah. they're not dogs or cats they will not love you back uh -huh. and regardless how much you feed them show them love it's just simply they're here just to exist yeah but same thing you're blessed to be on this earth you know what i mean and we're blessed to interact with them like there's so much experiences you could take from something like this mm -hmm. and it's such a beautiful creature like, come on like, <laughs> that. i got you what advice would you give to someone that wants to get into snake breeding or whatnot? Oh, to get into snake breeding precisely? Yeah, someone brand new. Mm, what would be like the first three things a, you would recommend for them to do? Literally, breeding snakes is a phase. Um, it's a phase when I say as if, okay, like this music's popping this certain time of like the week. You know what I mean? Like everything's such a phasey thing this time in life for some reason. And... There's so many people, like right now, Burmese pythons is the phase. Yeah. But maybe next year, California king snakes might be the phase. Mm -hmm. So many people want to get caught up breeding a certain animal than not being able to get rid of them. And it's going to cause more problems in the reptile world. And especially because, oh, it's like dog breeding. You know how dogs, for example, we have more dogs in shelters than more people own them. And that, yeah. that's what we're not trying to have with the snakes. So that's just going to look crazy with 25 foot pythons with nowhere to go got you so, so so like what's the solution to people if they don't want their their reptiles that's the hardest part okay um so. the hardest part about that um especially if you don't have any zoos like popcorn zoo like we're lucky we have six flags okay um amusement parks other zoos maybe even some animal shelters mm -hmm. other than that it's, you've got to really just maybe go to a pet shop it's, that's the hardest part is people having full-grown reptiles like full-grown yeah. snakes especially like to this extent and not having a place to find like to give them to because it's crazy. easy if it's like four foot long you know what i mean yeah but the big boys it's yeah like, like these guys our enclosures right now are eight feet long and four feet wide so yeah that's room yeah. you know what i mean like so what about the spca would they even take them or they probably would um put them down they're going probably going to get put down uh, okay. being being completely honest so the best um, choice is probably to go to like a zoo pet shop and whatnot. yeah because they're going to see it as an animal that not a lot of people have, nobody really wants, especially nobody wants a snake that's fully grown already. Yeah. It takes a fun out of watching it. Like, that's the one thing. Like, I know mm -hmm. I love, that's one of the main things that made me fall in love with Burmese pythons is taking a before and after picture. Uh -huh. Like, if I showed you a picture of Sunshine back in 2016 when she was five feet long. That's the 150 pounder? Yep. Okay. And showed her a picture now, you'd be like, uh, Reggie? Yeah. Like, you feel me? <laughs> so it's like, oh, uh, like, that's one of my main things that got me truly intrigued. And also with these guys, they can eat such a big amount of prey. Mm. And a lot of people don't know, like, snakes, like these guys, they can, they swallow gazelles. Like, come on. That's not. Yeah. yeah, yeah nah, but that's, that's another so thing that will got people messed up with snakes is, well, especially these guys. Oh, let me have a feeding party. Yep. People will invite their friends over. Oh, come over. Watch me feed my snake. Yeah. And next thing you know, the snake's never being held and it's only being fed. So now every time you slide that door open, it's launching out looking for food. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, no, I don't like this animal. It's wild. Da, 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 da. It's like, no, you didn't do what you had to do. You were supposed to not feed it every day with your buddies. Gotcha. You gotta take it out. Same. They, actually, this is the one snake species that's known for its obesity, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Yep, people over I never knew them. that you could have that. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, like, what are some other diseases that snakes are pr prone to getting? Well, see, reptiles tend to have... um. One of the best immune systems in the animal kingdom. Okay. So they don't really get sick that much, I guess you could say. But mm -hmm. they do develop respiratory infections, like skin problems, uh, due to humidity. Um, other than that, you really don't mouth rot, like some okay. like mouth infection of the gums. Other than I that, I never do that. <laughs> yeah, and that just happens. I guess most snakes die from old age, and they could live to thirty five years. <laughs> and That's crazy. The one thing about Burmese pythons and all bigger species is they end up mostly passing away from some side uh, type of um focal cancer okay and that's pretty much ovarian cancer and it, a lot of people when especially in the hobby world don't breed their animals and that's why we kind of try to breed ours once a year mm -hmm. so they get to refresh those follicles because if those follicles sit they gotcha. eventually could turn into growths and tumors you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that's just part of the natural animal kingdom is to cycle those follicles out year after year and they're not yeah. like lizards and the follicles that's skin right uh the follicles is um and pretty much the embryos, I guess you could say. So like, embryo. Wait, wait, break it down for me. Yeah. So follicles. so wait. So the follicles are that's what you call eggs. Mm, no, the eggs while they're still inside the inside the pretty much the body of the snakes though. 
Oh, okay, okay, cool. Because I was thinking about follicles, like hair follicles. Oh, no, uh-uh. oh okay. So that's the proper term for a snake egg yeah. follicle. Okay, cool. Well, you told me something new. <laughs> you teach me everything new today, man. But I definitely appreciate you. I ain't getting too close because that's snake. But, uh, <laughs> but he keeps on eyeing you too. That's yeah, cool. I, I know we got beef, but I don't, I don't want no beef. You sure, you don't want to hold them. Nah, I'm good, bro. <laughs> but uh, tell the people how they can reach out to you. Um, if you guys want to reach out to me, check out any of my animals. You go check me out on Instagram at t underscore darnell one or td snakes. I'm trying to think, do I have a caps in that? I don't believe so, but just look for a picture of a black dude with a big yellow snake around his neck, and it's sure to be me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cuz I appreciate you, man. Thank you for tuning in to another episode, Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized.